Redfish are probably one of the most sought after and widely distributed inshore and nearshore fish in Florida. The great thing about redfish is they're pretty much evenly distributed through all the coastal counties of Florida, you know, inhabiting the inshore waters of the rivers, the canals, lagoons, you know, brackish water estuaries. Pretty much everywhere on the coast you can, you know, go and find and target these, these redfish. And the great thing about it is you don't even need a boat. They're the type of species that you can target from bridges, shorelines, uh, the beaches and piers. It's kind of the, the, working, the working man's fish. Everybody can have a shot at catching a redfish. This week we're in Titusville. We're fishing the Mosquito Lagoon, um, an estuary that's known for its red fishing, a shallow body of water. And the neat thing about this area is this is an area that redfish come and they live forever. A lot of places the redfish will go offshore and spawn, but apparently this breeder stock of redfish stay in the lagoon their whole lives. Um, and this is a destination where if you want to come catch redfish, it's surely one of the best places in Florida to do it. Uh, what a pretty morning. It is, man. Absolutely gorgeous morning here on the Space Coast, Mosquito Lagoon. That's it. So Mosquito Lagoon is something totally different for us as we've left the Triton at home. It's, uh, it can pretty much do anything, any place, but this is the one you know, place in the state of Florida that to come out here and target these redfish is what we're going to be targeting today. You need a shallow water skiff, something that floats super skinny. That's right. Redfish, I mean, that's, that's really going to be our prime target. It's one of those species that's found around the whole state of Florida, but really well known here in this Mosquito Lagoon. Absolutely, and uh, these fish are up in the skinny water. We find them on the flats one to three feet, and so it's really, it's great to be out here in a skinny skiff that can pull quietly, that can get it up to, the, up to these fish on the flats. and. Uh, give you the opportunity to make a cast on them. Yeah, so today we're gonna kind of soup the nuts on everything about redfish. We're kind of touching all the different techniques, where they're at, you know, really just kind of delve into everything redfish, and there's no better place to do it than the Mosquito Lagoon. Absolutely, this is uh, world-renowned redfish territory, man. Well, I'm excited to get on. I'm excited to get on with you. <laughs> What am I looking for? Are they going to be pushing wakes? So right now we're looking for fish that are pushing weight. We're looking for fish that are tailing. And as that sun gets higher, we'll be able to see into the water. They've been sitting in these potholes here. So we have a broken bottom with grass and mud and sand. And they'll be sitting in those holes or right on the edge of those holes. We'll be able to see that better as the sun comes up. So right now we're just doing a little bit of blind casting and then just working this bait. Oh, there he is. There he is. Got him, fish on. Nice. Fish on, baby. <laughs> you said you saw him moving right there on that bank. Got a mosquito lagoon redfish on the top water, first thing in the morning. Don't get any better than that. Oh, how pretty. This place is Peace. so pretty. It's funny, you know, eating a topwater plug. This is a fish that looks like he's built to eat on the bottom, but they got no problem coming up eating on the top. Purdy, you got fish. him? You need some assistance? I got him. Single spotter on one side, lit up tail. Now, is this typical size for here? Or? This is uh, just right under slot. Actually, he might be right in the slot. And, uh, but. He's and what's amazing is how their coloring changes for right. their environment. This is a darker fish. And you'll see that if they get down in the sand, they'll light up a little bit lighter, just be a little whiter. And then when they're getting that in that mud and into that grass, they'll get a little more copper. That's why we call them pumpkins in October. Look at the coloration on his tail. They light up that blue. Yeah. God, so pretty. Redfish are a true conservation success story. They used to be commercially harvested in the waters uh, around Florida until the 80s, where they gained game fish status. What that meant, there was no longer a commercial harvest for these fish, and they could only be taken recreationally, and that was huge. These fish were almost taken to decimation. They became so popular, the redfish black and craze became so popular that they almost fished these to extinction. 
Another thing that saved redfish besides the game fish status was the net ban that took effect in 1995. And what this did was really help bring back the bait fish population in the inshore waters. When the net ban was gone, so many other things were able to prosper and live in the rivers. Everything started to flourish in the rivers again, and this really helped the redfish population. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Florida is the fishing capital of the world and ranked right up there with its inshore species is the redfish, one of the most sought after inshore species. You know, these are great table fare, excellent fighting fish, capable of targeting with any type of tackle. They're just the, truly the perfect inshore species. Those you guys affected by the seagrass stuff that in the Indian River Lagoon has, the die off of seagrasses? Oh, we're losing grass, man. There are uh, several things out here that play a role to our clean water and our dirty water, and one of those being manatees eating grass. You have sewage spills and farming with fertilizer getting dumped into the water. And uh, what that ends up doing is it aids into that algae bloom, which dirties the water, which inhibits the sunlight from hitting the grass. There you go, you gotta follow it right there. Yeah. Thought about it. Thought about it for sure. Yeah, you lose that water quality, you lose that sunlight, that photosynthesis, this grass exactly. isn't gonna grow. Exactly. And you know, in the last several years, we've had mild winters, and that winter, that colder temperature really plays a, a key factor in cleaning this water up. It helps push those manatees south and give the grass a break. It also cleans up that brown algae, which creates clearer water, which then allows our grass to get more sunlight and helps it grow. This grass is just a nursery. It's yeah. a breeding ground for all the bait fish and everything that the redfish, you know, live off of. Yeah, these shrimp and, grass and the crabs and get into that grass. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a vital. Oh, there he is. There he is. Nice. Fish on. Such a vital so part red. of the fish, fishery. Just crossed his path. He yep. bumped up yep. and yep. that was just Beautiful. the right trajectory. And again, just sitting in that mud, we bumped him up. There was another one with him. There was a couple there. I had cast out previous and was just, he headed right towards it, which was perfect. Listen to that. Light tackle. Yeah, it's hard to beat. Just using a little 3500 slammer three. 15 pound braid and 20 pound leader. Right, he's lit up. Upper slot. They're just moving around that mud. You can see him kicking that mud up. You know, a couple minutes ago we were in the grass and now we're in this mud. You like everything. Pretty, pretty. And his tail's a lit up blue. Look at the shoulders on him. He may just be right over slot. Currently, the regulations for Florida redfish are 18 to 27 inches. The reason for this is at 30 inches, they're sexually mature. And what we're gonna do by taking that smaller you know, redfish is not really tap into that breeder population. This way we ensure that there's fish for the future for our children to catch. So one thing about the Mosquito Lagoon that's different than most of your estuaries in Florida is this, there's no tide here. We are strictly, the water moves strictly based on the wind, in which direction the wind is blowing. Our redfish here are, you know, they're local, meaning they don't leave, they don't run offshore out the inlet to breed. We have our bulls, we'll stay here local in Mosquito Lagoon and any river lagoon, the north Indian river lagoon, you know? A lot of times what you'll see them do is they'll pop up, they'll tail for just a second. Sometimes, like right now, they'll, they'll be hanging out. You'll have no idea they're there unless they push. And uh, when you can't see them, using a, a paddle tail, like a DOA cow, to be able to cover a lot of water, search bait, if you will, to help find these fish. There he is. Right on that sand. Nice. 
You tight? Is that a trout? That's a red. A little red? It's a red. A little rat. Right on the edge of that sand hole. Yeah. Found him right there on the edge of that grass. You know, but look at this one. It's a little, a little red. It's such a healthy environment to have these small ones as well. Look at this. Look at the coloring on his tail. The color on his tail is so blue. And they're taking on what they're eating with the crabs and exactly. the crustaceans. They'll take on the coloring like so many other things out in the environment. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by PIN. Let the battle begin. You can find redfish distributed all throughout the Gulf of Mexico, from the Keys to Texas. But when you get around Louisiana, this is the heart. This is the prime location for red fishing. World renowned, best red fishing bar none. They have the habitat, they have the bait, everything falls into place. Louisiana is just a giant estuary for redfish. That's what makes it so great. I mean, marshes as far as you can imagine, inshore coastal waters, shallow bays, tons of bait. This place is the place to go to if you definitely want to target big redfish. Redfish truly aren't red. They, they do take on an orangey pumpkin color, um, but they also can, you know, it can range. They can also be a light tan color. They really take on the characteristics of the water that they're in. And the great thing about them is they take a variety of bait. It's not just one type of way that you can target these, these fish. You can use live bait, dead bait, artificial, fly, just about any means that you have at your disposal you can catch a redfish with. I think probably one of the most favorite ways to target these for most people is sight casting. And it's hard to explain, but when you're 100 yards away on a flat and you see a tail rise up and the anticipation of, of getting there to that fish, making the perfect presentation with your bait, you know, he's, he's there, he, he's preoccupied with his head down in the grass or down in the mud, and you're, you know, slowly pulling along or, or getting up to that fish, the anticipation builds, um, and it, it, it's electrifying. It's hard to explain. The nerves run through you. You try to make that perfect cast, that perfect presentation, but when it all works out, when it all comes together, it's just, it's just magical. <music> Hold it, hold it, hold it. He's right here. There he is. Nice, nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. How cool was that? That was a great cast, George. <laughs> Saw him, threw to him, came oh, up and sucked it right out. Watched him open his mouth and suck it in. A couple of feet from him and he just inhaled it. You know, that's the, just totally what you think of when you think of sight casting for him guy up on the polling platform, pulling you along. He's pretty too. High sun, to your back, calm shoreline. There he is. That cast was a couple feet in front of him, man. He saw that thing and darted right after it. There was no hesitation from him. You hear him just drumming away there. Yeah, he just opened up his mouth, flared from gills, and sucked it right in. Oh, I see those crushers, man. They just got the throat full of crushers down there. They've done a good job at managing these fish. You know, they were over harvested for years. You know, you grew up catching these fish. I grew up catching these fish. I want to bring my kids out here one yeah. day to catch these fish. So it's so nice to see that they're being managed properly. And It's um, truly a success story. It for, is. For Florida. This is a fish that, you know, we can kind of you know, follow its suit and for other species that maybe you're threatened. Look at that tail. Look at that blue tail, lit up, so pretty. Single spot on that side. I think, do you believe he had a single spot on the other side as well? Yeah, it's kind of Almost mirrored. a mirror image, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, as we as anglers, if we aren't respectful and good stewards of the water uh, and don't uh, participate in conservation efforts, uh, you know, we could be at a point where one day we're, uh, we won't have redfish to go after. We won't have uh, tailing reds on the flats like we had today. And, and uh, I don't have any kids yet, but one day I'd love to be out here with my own kids and see them light up as they hook into a tailing redfish. Uh, and if we're not conscientious about what we're doing, how we're uh, taking care of these fish and releasing them properly and not taking over more than our limits and, and, and not always taking our limits, 
you know, releasing the fish, then maybe one day, you know, well, our kids will be able to do that as well. Redfish are pretty quick growers. Within one year, they reach a length of 10 inches, two years, 20 inches. By the time they're 30 inches, they're sexually mature, and these fish can live 30, 40, 50 years. The state record in Florida is something like 52 pounds. Looking at a redfish, you can see how they're built to feed on the bottom. Um, the mouth is set down, the eyes are, are, are forward on their head to where they can look down, and they have a tendency to, to feed down in the mud and with their tails up. And in those shallow waters, that's when you find that situation where that tail's popped up, that signature series that it's a redfish, that he's rooting around in the grass or in the mud um, looking for crustaceans or small bait fish. But interestingly enough though too is these redfish will come up and eat a top water plug and it's almost clumsy. You can tell that they're more of a bottom feeder but when they get aggressive and they want to come after a top water plug they have no problem getting that head out of the water and, and chewing on that plug. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Power Pole, Swift, Silent, Secure. There's a lot of things that I really love about my Mercury motor. The one thing is ease of maintenance. 100 hour service, which most people do maybe once or twice a season, I'm probably doing every month. And it's one of those things that once you do it, once you learn it, you have the right tools, um, you have the oil, the lube, everything to do it, it's simple to do. This is something that takes me 30 minutes and I can easily have a 100 hour service done. The, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the prop. So the next step, we're gonna drain the lower unit oil. It should start to drain. Now, once we crack this one, you'll start to see the oil draining out. I'm gonna go ahead and take the drain plug out. Same drain pan, you just kinda of wanna realize that this is gonna drain out. Um, you can adjust the tilt of the motor and make sure you get it the right angle for your drain. Verado has a simple spin-on oil filter, just like a car, easy to change. After we drop that oil, engine oil out of the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and change this spin-off oil filter. We don't see any problems here, so what we're gonna wanna do next is go ahead and fill up this lower unit uh, with oil. When it starts to pour out of here, that I, I know this lower unit is full. Put this top screw in. Go ahead and unscrew this and put that drain plug in. What we're gonna do next is to reinstall the engine oil drain plug. Put the prop back on. Now we need to move to the top side of the motor. It's a simple disconnect with these inline fuel filters. When you get it into place, you should hear a click. This is where I'm gonna put brand new oil in. We're gonna go ahead and tighten back down that fill cap. Quick check on it, make sure we're at a level where we need to be. I'm in between the optimal range, so I know I'm good. And when this can is full, I can just take it to the auto parts store and at free of charge, uh, dump this into their container and they recycle it. There it is. There's more with him. Oh yeah, he's right there. He's on you. God, that was just the classic redfish bite right there. Those fish are sitting there underneath that bird. Tails are up. Happy redfish. So there's a school of them right here. Whole school with us. It muddied this water all up here. Look at this. God, his tails came off, up off from a distance. There must have been 15 fish there. Because we had bumped a couple. Beautiful. God, he is a lot uh, more orange than any fish we've caught today. There was a bunch with him too. There was, man, that was gorgeous. That wasn't the only one there. God, that was perfect. Those tails were up. I mean, that was from 50 yards away we saw those tails. And look at his tail, so blue. He's barely hooked. Beautiful. Look at him. God, look how, it's like a pumpkin. Look at the colors of that. Now, why would he be different? I mean, those other fish were right here. It's just, this guy's more in this, in this dirty, muddy water. You know, the other guys that we were catching on that bank were, it's a crystal clear water. You know, when they're in that clean, clear water, they tend to be 
a little bit lighter, but when they get in that dirty water, they tend to get a little bit more orange. Super pretty. There's a pretty one. There's a whole pile of them in there, too. You know, these are great table fare, excellent fighting fish, capable of targeting with any type of tackle. They're just the, truly the perfect inshore species. And they're a true success story on how far they've come. Almost fish to decimation, and with the correct conservation and management of the fishery, red fishing looks great for the future. It's not funny. You're a jerk. <laughs> Just a little technical difficulties. We'll be back to your regular scheduled broadcast here momentarily. He even gave me a little time on the bow and I was able to catch snook, but it was just great to have him on, on the boat. A lot better with a remote and trolling motor. Even though he spun the boat in circles for a while and I didn't catch a fish other than a snook. Going in circles. <laughs> serpentine, serpentine.